Hey everybody, you ready for a new puzzle video? It's White's turn to move and win the game, even if he's down one rook for the knight. White has this powerful pawn here on f7, just two squares away from promoting. But can you really win here as White? Because trust me, you'll really be amazed at how this puzzle ends. So right away we can see that the pawn is under attack. So the first move in this position is going to be pawn to f7. And this move has multiple reasons behind it. Firstly, it controls the g8 square, so the enemy king isn't going to be able to come save the day, because the g7 square is also controlled by our knight. And second, it opens this diagonal here for the bishop. So, if black is going to try and play rook to f6, bishop to b2 is going to pin the rook and win the game for white. Black bishop takes the knight, white promotes to a queen, black moves to h7, our queen takes rook, bishop to g6, and then queen to g7 is checkmate. Black could also try to sacrifice his rook in order to take that pawn with rook to g8, but this is only going to lead to a forced checkmate with a knight and a bishop. So, Black's only real defense here is moving his rook to a6, check. White now has three possible moves. King to b1, king to b2, and bishop to a3. But, what is going to be the right move here? Now I want you to pause the video for a couple seconds and see if you can try and figure this one out. If you move king to b1, it's actually going to end up in a loss for white because it allows black to take our knight with a check and after we move, the enemy king is going to be able to move to g7 and stop the promotion next turn and this is a loss for white. Now if you played king to b2, the most natural move in this position, unfortunately this is also going to result in a loss because with that move, white can no longer apply this pin with bishop to b2. And now, the black rook can move to f6, and white is going to lose his precious pawn the next turn. Now surprisingly, the correct move here was actually bishop to a3, sacrificing our own bishop. But can you tell me why is a sacrifice the correct play here? Well, it's because after the rook takes, we can play king to b2. Black does not have the possibility to get behind our pawn with rook to f6, and there is no stopping that pawn from promoting now. If you had found that sacrifice, hats off to you. You got great tactical vision. But don't you dare think this puzzle ends here. Nope, this puzzle still has quite a few more moves up its sleeve that you would never spot on your own. Now in this position, Black has this unbelievable defense with rook to a2, check, sacrificing their rook. Now tell me, what would you do in this situation? One option here, if you're feeling a little bit greedy, is the capture. But congratulations, you just drew the game if you do that, because black is going to play bishop to e6, check, forking the king in the pawn. By that same logic, we can't go to any white squares like b3 or b1, because the same result would happen. So white's only choices here are c3 and c1. King to c3, even if it might seem like the correct move in this position, which brings your knight closer to the action, it's in fact the wrong move, because black is going to sacrifice his rook once again by playing rook to c2, and if you capture, the same fork applies. Okay, so you can't win this game even if you're trying to escape with king to d4, due to the fact that after rook to d2 check, Black's rook can access the 8th file and now stop the promotion. So, once again, the correct move here is a little bit counterintuitive, and it's king to c1, which moves our king further away. But we do that because if black would continue with rook to c2 check, we can avoid it by playing king to d1. And black's bishop can't check us over here on g4 because the knight then intervenes. Therefore, white's promotion is inevitable next turn. Or is it? Did you really think I would show you this puzzle if it was all that easy? No, no. As I said, you just might be amazed at the way this puzzle ends. Black is not giving up here. Instead, he's continually going to start giving us checks with rook to a1. We move our king to d2. He moves his rook to a2. We move the king up the board with king to e3. Then black checks us with rook to a3. We go to king to f4. And after rook to a4, check, it seems like we finally arrive at safety with king to g5. But again, black has this brilliant rook sacrifice, rook to g4. Now again, we can't take it because black's bishop 
would take the knight with a check, allowing black to move king to g7 and stop the promotion. Once more, white has three possible moves here, f6, h5, or h6. So, what's the correct move now? Can you spot it this time? If you're saying king to f6, unfortunately, once more, you drew the game. Even if this move seems safe, black no longer has a viable check. He has another viable rook sacrifice with rook to g8. But wait a minute, because now you might be wondering, didn't we just see this exact position at the beginning of the video? Well, not really, because at the beginning of the video, we still had our bishop. And if we take a look now, black would capture back. And even if you fork the king and the bishop with knight to e7, we can't deliver a checkmate using just our knight. If we go to h5, black has the same defense with rook to g8. And even if you think, I'm not forced to take right now, I can play an intermezzo like king to h8 or knight to e7. Sadly, you'd be wrong here. Knight to e7 would still lead to a draw. Black would play rook to f8. And even if you have this fork with knight to g6, the black king can move to g7. Our knight takes the rook, black king takes back, and now white king to g6, black bishop to e6, and white would eventually lose that pawn. Moving our king to h6 is even worse now, because not only are you going to draw the game, you're going to lose it. The black rook again moves to f8, and now how are you going to protect that pawn? You no longer have the fork, and if you're trying to protect it with king to g6, the black bishop is going to take your knight with a check, you take back, and then rook takes your pawn. Therefore, the winning move for white here, in this position, is king to h6. But how exactly is king to h6 a win? Because black can still move his rook to g8, and we saw from our previous example how this would exceptionally save the game for black. What drastically changes here is that how the enemy king is stuck in that corner. And he can't go anywhere. I'm going to let you pause the video once again so you can find the winning move. Now let me help you out a little bit by reminding you that the king here has absolutely nowhere to go. He's stuck in the corner. And we have a knight. Wink, wink. The winning move in this position is going to be knight to e7, forking the two pieces. But that's not really the important detail. The important detail is that if you promote now by taking the rook, the queen is going to be protected and it's going to be a checkmate. Also, black can't move his rook to f8 because knight to g6 is going to be a checkmate too. But yet again, even in this completely hopeless situation, black still manages to find a brilliant defense by playing his bishop to e6. So, is that it? We did all of that just for this game to end in a draw? Yep, that's it. But it's actually not a draw. It's going to end in a win. Because even if black brings in a defender, we're still going to take the rook with a check. The black bishop is forced to take, and with only one knight on the board, we can deliver a checkmate that you really wouldn't see in your everyday games. Knight to g6 is check and mate. What a move, what a puzzle, and what incredible play from both sides, ending with one of the most satisfying checkmates I've ever seen. Thank you again for watching, and as usual, if you guys have any suggestions on videos you'd like me to make, let me know in the comments, and we'll see you next time.